more than one million signatures were gathered within 24 hours against the forced recess of Parliament. Many Britons are furious with their new Prime Minister Boris Johnson. Including businesswoman and anti-Brexit activist Gina Miller, she has launched legal action to defend the rights of Parliament in the courts. We're not questioning whether having that power using it is illegal or not. What we're questioning is that the use of this power in proroguing Parliament for such a long time, five weeks. Brexit hardliners, however, don't understand what all the fuss is about. Jacob Rees-Mogg told reporters the move was democratic. Yes, it's fully in accordance with the Constitution. Is it? Behind the scenes at Westminster, opposition parties are forging alliances under great pressure to try to politically thwart Johnson's plans. They are focused on bringing forward legislation to prevent a no-deal Brexit. We'll use every parliamentary device that we possibly can. If that, if that has to include at some stage a vote of no confidence, that will still be open to us, that will be on the table. What we won't do, what we won't do is allow Boris Johnson to act like a dictator. But politicians only have four session days to get any measure through Parliament. It is a tight race against time. Well, for more, we're joined by European affairs analyst and anti-Brexit campaigner John Wirth. John, the uh, Parliament, the, the clock, is not working in Parliament's favour in the UK right now. Does Parliament still have enough time to block Boris Johnson's effort to suspend it? Uh, Blocking it to suspend it, perhaps not. To block no-deal Brexit, probably it does. That's going to be the focus of what's going to happen next week. They've got three main sitting days, Tuesday till Thursday next week, where, that, where the big fight is going to happen, essentially, because already the week after is when Parliament will be suspended due to this, uh, this move that Boris Johnson made uh, two days ago. So to stop Johnson suspending Parliament, probably not. To stop a no-deal Brexit, a crash-out Brexit, there there's probably still a chance. What options does Parliament have, first of all, in terms of, of, of blocking the suspension that it's facing? Because Boris Johnson is trying to block, to block Parliament there, to stop Parliament for five weeks to suspend it, which, uh, you know, of course, has gotten everyone very angry. What options does Parliament have to, to block that? So, essentially... The difficulty in the UK is the UK doesn't have a written constitution, so exactly what Parliament's powers are in such a circumstance, we ultimately don't quite know. What we do know is to use this power, which has existed for a long time and is normally to just stop a parliamentary year and start the next one, it's never normally been used to basically take Parliament out of sitting for five weeks. Could you imagine if Angela Merkel said, we're just going to stop the, the German Parliament sitting for five weeks? There'd be an incredible crisis. So ultimately, we don't know the answer to whether Parliament can actually stop it, the suspension of the city. What we do know next week, however, is Parliament is going to try a legislative route to stop Boris Johnson's Brexit plans. It's going to try that first. And as we heard with the clip, the second effort, if that fails, may be to bring a vote of no confidence in Boris Johnson's government. But the members of Parliament know that to stop Boris Johnson's Brexit plans is easier than stopping Boris Johnson himself. And, and so that's what's going to be the focus next week. Well, you mentioned uh, a vote of confidence. If that happens, if it gets to that point, there's a vote of confidence in Parliament regarding Boris Johnson, do you think he'd win it? I think there's a chance he would win it because the difficulty is, is uh, many Conservatives who are unhappy with Boris Johnson dislike the leader of the opposition, Jeremy Corbyn, even more than they dislike Boris Johnson. So it might sound rather crazy that members of Parliament or the Conservatives don't want Boris Johnson's key policy, his no-deal Brexit, but they would still sooner have him than, than Jeremy Corbyn as Prime Minister. That's why legislative efforts to stop no-deal Brexit are a cleverer option than trying to go for a vote of no-confidence route because everyone understands that a legislative route to stop no deal, deal Brexit is much more likely to succeed than a vote of no confidence. And so that's the game that's going to be played out, particularly in the next week. Um, then there'll be another round after the suspension of Parliament ends in October. The difficulty, of course, is all this is against a ticking clock. Britain is supposed to leave by 31st of October, and, that, and that's already under 70 days away. So therefore, it's very, very difficult to see exactly how these things will work and in which order. Just briefly, uh, does this parliamentary suspension that Boris Johnson has engineered, does it strengthen his hand in trying to negotiate 
a better Brexit deal with uh, Brussels. No, I don't think it does, because I think Brussels has essentially said, hang on a minute, like, first of all, that's a big democratic question over the way that the, 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 the UK is behaving. And second, what we saw particularly yesterday was how, how much that kind of strengthened the opposition to Boris Johnson. I think it actually probably, if anything, reduces the chances that Boris Johnson would get a deal uh, from the European Union. John, thank you so much. Uh, consultant and campaigner, John Worth.